see the tomatoes, they are breaking down. And I'll add that and so. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you A-OK? -okay? In your neck of the woods, so what up, what up? Man as a respect man, are your girl, Debbie from Dunga Yard. Welcome you all to the Jamaican kitchen. Welcome once more. It is the Jamaican cooking journey. If you're new right on over here, special welcome. Those of you who were there with me from the beginning of this journey and you're still here, manners and respect. Happy birthday. If whenever you're watching this video, it is your birthday, happy birthday to you. In this month of October, if you have already have a birthday from the Jamaican cooking journey, happy belated. And if your birthday is to come, happy birthday when it comes. And let me also take this opportunity to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of you who have wished me happy birthday. So many hundreds of you. And if I have not um, replied to you as yet, I'm, make, I'm making sure I take this opportunity right here on this video to tell you thank you. It's well or it was well appreciated. And... I will reply to you as soon as possible, if it's even with an art, to show my appreciation. <clears throat> now, on today's episode of the Jamaican Cooking Journey, we will be preparing roasted breadfruit and Jamaican corn pork. Our roasted breadfruit and corn pork Jamaican style, and I'll show you how to do it just on the inside. Just on the inside at home, no outside business done, not at all, because I know the time, you know, is changing around on your stove top, right in the very comfort of your kitchen. I have done roasted breadfruit, different, different occasions, different type of way, and all of that. I've showed you how to prepare corn pork too, but we're going to be doing the roasted breadfruit and the corn pork today as a meal. So... You'll need a breadfruit. This is a breadfruit that has been inside my refrigerator. It's not really ripe, but this has breadfruit has been there for about two weeks. So when you look at this breadfruit, you will realize that it has been properly drained. I removed the stem before I put it in there. You could also wrap it when you get it in a plastic wrap. Keep it in your refrigerator. Therefore, I'm saying to you now, your breadfruit can stay in your refrigerator up to two weeks without getting all ripe. Now, we're going to do the foil wrap stove version type. Some people ask, Debbie, if I have an electric oven, what stove what should I use? I suggest wrap it properly just the same in the foil paper, stuck it in the oven. Don't let it be too, too high because some people just put them in the oven like that. Some people wrap it in the foil paper. But let me tell you something. When you put it in the oven without the foil paper wrapping it, you will never enjoy a nice eating roast breadfruit because the oven dries out the moisture. Remember, breadfruit have moisture in it, you know? Yeah. So we are going to be doing that. And then we will also be preparing some corn pork. So the very first thing you want to do when you're preparing the Jamaican corn pork and roast breadfruit, you want to start at your breadfruit the very first. So you want to get your breadfruit all wrapped. This foil is thin. If you have thin foil, it doesn't matter. Thin or thick. So you want to wrap it. And as you go along, you make sure it's properly secure. It's properly sealed. We're going to wrap it some more. Too. You don't want to see any of your breadfruit popping out. So I'm going to give it a few more wraps. A few more. Layers should so to speak. So, so after this video, all who likes roasted breadfruit and corn pork will be able to prepare it. You'll be able to prepare it if you, once you get your breadfruit. And as I said before, you could get it ahead of time, two weeks. Yeah, and you put it in your refrigerator. You will be able to prepare it if you're there foreign and you're a Jamaican or even if you're not a Jamaican, you'll be able to prepare it. Your roasted breadfruit and corn pork Jamaican style for your Thanksgiving breakfast. Now that you have wrapped it, you can realize this thing is so light. It was properly trained there in the 
refrigerator when i put it in there it was a pretty weighty breadfruit now it's light this i think this is that less than two pounds when you wrap it there at the top you saw me i had the the stem removed so this is the stem okay so when you see this is the stem you just want to line up with the bottom so this is the bottom this is the top you can put it on the top you can put it on the bottom no but i put it on the side first why there is the heart the core of the breadfruit in jamaica we say the art and that is the main focus you want the eat to penetrate the the core of the breadfruit so you know i'll put it on the side putting it on the side is always the last the, the, you know the, the options when you burn it to the top and you burn it to the bottom then you can rotate it a little on the side on the side there is a video there very much in depth more than this one that shows you so we're gonna come right here now and i am gonna be starting with it on top okay i'm gonna be starting with it on the top mind you this breadfruit is so drained it's not hard to roast when the breadfruit is light, it's not hard for us. When it's weighty, it's going to take forever. Mm? So this is the where I remove the stem. I'm going to put it on a medium heat. Remember to make sure you are paying attention. Okay? So I'm going to put it on this medium heat. And that is going to be happening right there. So you are preparing your roasted breadfruit. You want to have your heat just like that. Because you're not in an hurry, you know. You're not go, you know, it's not an express um, routine. So right here, I have got some corn pork and I have left it a few hours to soak, to soak, to get off that salt off there. Now, this is about the third water. You could have left it overnight too. I did not get mine from overnight. We are going to throw this water out. We are going to wash it and we are going to come now to get this corn pork scald off to get out some of the excess salt. You don't want to take out all the salt, making it fresh. Breadfruit goes well with something that has a little chops of saltiness to it, if you know anything about breadfruit. I'm going to remove this water now, and I will be coming now to give it one scald because I was soaking it in a lot of water. So I soon come. Okay, now we are back. This is my corn pork, and my butcher was so nice to me. He did all the cutting up so this is when you buy it all you want to cut it up in fine pieces like these that it can cook evenly and quickly O'Neill big up yourself big up yourself O'Neill from crossroads and meat market up now you also want to get some pork you're not gonna get all lean pork if you get so so lean pork and no fatty you're not dealing with corn pork and a can pork and breadfruit you want you have to get some pork with this some lean here and some fat to the back that's the type of pork we use for corn pork when you know if you are doing soup and stew peas you can probably get all lean but for fix up fry up you gotta get it with some fat okay all right so this is what it looks like i have got here and this corn pork is really deceiving too you know like the bread for them because it's a pork where when it don't scale off and 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 all of that and something it shrink down it will make it look like people broke your kitchen and teeth out some of the meat and all of that now these little things you are seeing here some people i not know miss them these are what they use to corn the pork you could probably want to use a glove too because this thing have a lot of spice and pepper and sitting funny you know so if you put in your hand in there you might want to use a glove because all they corn their pork it has a lot of stuff brings me to something that i want to say to you Brings me to something that I want to say to you. People are asking for corn pork. Debbie, can you teach us how to cook corn pork? Yes, I can. And I will. I'll be doing it very, very soon. I'll be showing you the way how my father, he was a licensed butcher. And I'll show you as a little girl how I saw him corn in pork. I'll do it for you. I promise you will get it before this pandemic year is over. So now... With all my porks, as I told you, my butcher did all the chopping up for me. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be scalding it off with a certain amount of water for just one time because it was soaking. After the scalding process, I am going to be using a little more water. After I scald, I'm going to be removing that water and I am going to be tenderizing it again in some water. Tenderizing, I'm going to be pre-cooking it because the, we are going to be preparing it with a frying method to have it with the breadfruit 
but the scalding method will not be enough to cook the pork the scalding and the frying will not be enough because I don't know how old this agya was I don't know how old master really was okay so to do it it makes it to be on the safe side after the scalding we are gonna tenderize also some people are gonna say you don't wash with um, vinegar you don't need to wash no can pork with no vinegar the salt that salt that that salt pickle that it was in has cleaned the pork so what we are going to do now we are going to get some water yes so i want to pick me up because me have water running in my kitchen for the long you know and all of that last year at this time i was in peer problem so catching a certain amount and i'll come back to show you what level of water you're supposed to have and how you have to proceed so we'll come back okay we are right back and this is what we've got right here this is the amount of water i'm using because I'm going to scald it off. And you know scalding for me. As, and we could still take a little more. And you don't want to use starting with hot water. You want to start with cold water. Okay. Now at this point. Whilst that is happening. Let us put our heat on. You want to put it on like a little higher. Not fully high. But you want to put it more on. Um, next to eye. Also. You want to cover it that it starts. But cover it not full. Cover it half way or half mouth as they would say you want to cover it why when it starts boiling the salt is gonna come up in it to the top make a froth and it's gonna come right over mess up the stove and gear bag of work and also turn you off from cooking your corn pork and your bread fruit when anything boil over by my store too terribly and I get turned off and I want to stop cook what about you what about you also at this point you're gonna smell your roast bread fruit starting because when you roast bread fruit in it have a smell whoever know about it it have a little tardy not tardy it have a little smell the way it's gone your drapes will absorb it and also it will go up in the ac and all of that so at this point you want to use a container something like this or even bigger filled with water to put somewhere inside your kitchen or probably in another room next door to your kitchen i'm gonna do just that when you see me, my can't work supposed to scald and may just drain off the water. Leave it to start tenderizing. More than likely too, I'll be turned and my breadfruit will be already turned. So, I'm not going to focus a lot more on the breadfruit because I say to you, there is a video that shows you how to do it in depth like this. So, I will leave the link that you go watch it. But true, we are doing the breadfruit and the can't work together every now and then. We got to prep on the breadfruit. My soon come. So okay now family, as soon as this starts happening with the pork, scalding, and you see that whiteness there, it's all the thing will come out, all this, you know, salt and all of them, something this one. You want to just remove it right now. And you just want to pour off this water. Be careful, be careful. I'm going to pour this water off and come right back to you. Okay, we are right back. We remember, I'm telling about the canned pork. You see, when it's the water catch it or it, it shrink, no, this has been scalded off. We have prepared some hot water and we are going to pour it on top of it and let it drain. The remainder of the hot water, I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. But before, before these things and this happens, sometimes when other people prepare it, girl, when you go out, go buy it, it happens. I I'm so annoyed at it. The extra hair from the pork that a sloppy butcher does. That 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 the butcher. Well, my it's a meat my it's a meat monger. My meat monger. He was not the one that prepared the, 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 the you know slaughter the animal. So this this is a no no for me. How you get rid of it? Use a skewer or a, a little knife like this, and you come right here, and very gently you use your flame to burn it don't try to cut it off because you're going to lose your little pork skin and then at the end of the day it's going to weigh down and you're going to lose because you want your little pork skin to keep crispy and nice so you look through your pork pieces and then you are going to do just that any amount of pieces it takes time proper preparing meal meals prepared properly it's going down your stomach take time to look about your stuff huh? And all of that. We are going to search through our batch here. 
and all of that we see we're going to do just that with them we're going to pour some hot water over it and the remainder of the water i'll come back to show you what i'm going to do must soon come okay now fam i've done just what i told you i would have done and i've rinsed it off with some excess hot water see what is happening there right now it is time to go right on over back into this pot right here if you want to use some other pot i um, have a lot of dishes to do fine now this is how it looks before after we scald it off you see what i'm doing so it's okay now now we are going to use some excess hot water not too much though just like we are going to be pressuring and we are going to cover it for just to come right over it look at that with nothing nothing get our flame on with nothing at all we are going to leave it here to sort of boil down but that boiling down is the tenderizing process we are going to cook it on in that water until it comes to a soft you know texture and then right there we are going to start we're going to drain it and then we are going to start the frying process while it's right on over here you realize that our bread fruit is roasting you see i've done the top i've done the bottom i've done a two this is my third time i'm going to turn it to another side you see that all of the steam is coming out now when you see it reaches at a point of we have turned it and you see a little bit or no steam at all coming out that is when you're you know your bread fruit is roasted not sure if I said it on the um, the in-depth video, but that is how you're going to know when your bread fruit is roasted. Also, you could use a skewer or a thin blade knife like this slender blade tall that can go from top to bottom. And you know you treat it as a cake. When you it goes to the core and it comes right out clean, it's ready. Must soon come. Right back at your family. First things first. We are on the inside just the same and the thunder is on the outside and you hear it right here. We are moving on to Jesse. Yeah, or pork never properly drained. Should be properly drained. Let me let it drain off a bit and come back. Okay. Pork properly drained. Jesse Daya read that. We're gonna put our pork in without no oil for now. Why no oil for now, Debbie? Because the pork of a whole heap of fat. And so this pork is partially cooked now, partially three quarters of the way cooked, of the way cooked. So the ice heat that you have, because this pork is gonna fry up, come brown and crisp up. So that takes a lot of heat and a lot of time. The ice heat by your stove and the popping start, and therefore, when the popping start, you know it is a boy pig. Somebody tell me, sir, like me, I tell, come on. You don't know anything about pig, so you can say what you want to say. That is happening there. Our breadfruit is roasted and all of that. We are going to be gently, carefully to removing our foil. So what you want to do? You want to open, pry open a little part because it's just all steaming up, family. And I need this plate, this thing I know. So you must be careful. Put on your, um, what that thing is, your, your mitten and all of that. Look at that. Red fruit is properly roast and all of that. Look at this. You want to put your thing right through, as I told you, like a cake to the other way. Coming out, see a piece of it coming out. Red fruit is properly roast, guy. Look like it turned. So that is happening. I eat that is coming to come. We want it to be properly fried and crispy. Right here, I have gone ahead and I have prepped all my little. What may I go put? To fix up my fried pork. I've got some tomatoes, lots of tomatoes, a little red and a little green, a little red bell pepper, some onions, a little garlic. You could have a few nice fresh kelly and some of this one. May not have none. So in the next clip, you will see what got happen. My soon come. Okay, now family, I want to turn this pork because as it fries, you have to like as if you are doing salt fish, you're frying up some salt fish or frying up some crispy chicken as the videos that I've done before. You have got to turn it over from time to time to let what is at, is at the bottom come to the top. But you don't play with this. You heard it popping in there. You heard it. And as I tell you, and I will tell you again, women pig, the female pig, the meat of the female pig, pig when you're frying it, it does not pop. So what I had to do, I had to lower the flame to the lowest 
to let that popping stops before me can approach it. You need to do the same when doing yours. So I'm going to be turning now. And you see what at the bottom you will realize. You see they are coming to. If you can look, you see we have a little oil down in there. This is the oil from the pork of itself. So you see a few pieces getting all <coughs> fried up. And all of that. Let me show you. Let me show you. These are down in the bottom. Look at this piece. Hmm? They have a fry till it come just like right there. Shoot them up, Dad. And all of that. We know why when we don't get through pork fry up for if we put it to the breast food, it look water, water, and whitey, whitey, and we, know, we want crispy fried corn pork. So we are gonna get our thing. So girl, I'll be doing this for a couple of times until all of it look brown and pretty like right here. And all of that. So I'll be coming back to touch base with you at that point. Okay, now family, this is where we are at. And remember, we did not put any oil. So this is all the corn pork natural that, you know, that seasoned corn pork oil. So that is why you need to choose the type of pork you use. If you want to enjoy your bread food with your corn, cook up, fry up corn pork. So, now you see them? You see all them bossy? You see all them cock up? And all of that. Now, our flame, I want you to come in. So I told you when you want to come to turn, you are to always turn your flame down. Now I've prepared all of these and I'm going to put in, be putting them right in. And as soon as you put it right in, you're going to bring your flame right back up to the very highest. Now you're going to incorporate all of them nice and stuff. And you have to go turn on up there, so. But all of them, you know them kitchen something there, they're going to be coming out into this contour. Okay? Look at this. Look at the beauty. Dad, what do you think about this, man? Beautiful. Yeah, man. Beautiful. This is beautiful. Accept nothing less than this from anyone for Jamaican fry up corn pork. Okay? Now, at this point, I would have put in some of this. The Jamaican mukbang and vlog, she has gone ahead. This is our, one of our latest products. It is blended scotch bonnet pepper. Right here. The number for you to call, make queries, and to place your orders on for this naturally blended Jamaican Scotch bonnet pepper will be right here. Right here. That means if you come into the comment section and ask me, Miss Debbie, how do I get that pepper? I know you have not watched the video to this point. So we shake it and we go and put a little bit. That is here. God can't take the eat. And this is a serious pepper. When you get it, exercise caution. Also, I'm going to be adding some of the same Jamaican mukbang and vlog, sweet and sour sauce to this corn pork and all of that. That is my gig to this fry up corn pork. So let's put a little of sweet and sour and all of that. You, God, I say, you see how me and I shake? They can't pork make me nervous. We are going to go now and we are going to steep down this can pork man not a suck me you know this little suck me I eat therefore you can't go too far you see the tomatoes they are breaking down and all of that and so and if I finish this video with just subtitles you understand some music is coming out a bit loud where I am right now and all of that look at this beautiful beautiful Beautiful. You just want to pull it, turn your flame off right here and now, and you just want to cover it half mass. When we return, I'll have some all plated for you. This is my roasted breadfruit, and the breadfruit was turned. And I like that. And how could we be preparing it? How could I be preparing it? Wow. Mmm. That is smell the sweet and sour there and the scotch bonnet flavor. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, make sure you get your sauce. Make sure I leave for you in the description the name of the sauces that I've used in here from the Jamaican mukbang and vlog. And how could I be sharing with you to how to prepare this for your boo, your husband, your whatever, your family's thanks Thanksgiving breakfast? I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna be plating up some for you, and when you see me next, it will be right in your face. Masum come. 
from my kitchen to yours, from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table, to your polite and most of all to your Thanksgiving breakfast table. It is Jamaican roasted breadfruit and corn pork done just for you, right in your kitchen. Your stainless steel kitchen, your up class kitchen, I saw, you saw it, I did, did, did it just for you. Thanks again to all those who have reached out to me, sending happy birthday greetings and all those of you who went beyond the call of happy birthday and sent me something for my birthday. Thank you, thank you so much. Love you. All the info to and all to on how to get on to me will be in the description of this and all my other videos. Music is coming up on the inside and the outside. Be you, do you. Love you, most of all. Some Jamaican roast bread food and camp work.